Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, today I'm gonna show you how I'm currently working on improving my watercolor skills. This is something I've been dropping here and there and mentioning here and there. Uh, and I think it's important because I'm at a point where I feel, shush, phone, because I'm at a point where I feel pretty uh, advanced and in a very good spot. And that actually makes things trickier because it's harder to know what to work on uh, and to find those subtleties, even though for someone more advanced, these will, things will be pretty uh, clear. Uh, so I want to show you that a bit of a different setup for the intro and outro of this video. I wanted to <laughs> use my mic and have a bit of a better audio at the expense of the video quality. Thank you so much. Let's get to it. So it's funny. There were two things that I felt were lacking and are still lacking in my skills. Uh, these are color matching and wet and wet technique when it's a big washes, smoother transitions, and you really have to nail that smoothness like in a sunset scene kind of the keech kind of scenes uh, the ones that aren't fragmented like this one uh, so I want to start with the most exciting achievement so far I actually painted this uh, based on this reference photo uh, and what I did here was really focus on color matching so I had my squiggles uh, and I would run them over the photo uh, and match the color I see uh, just as a preparation I have a few of these here uh, and then I approached painting it so I kind of knew what I'm mixing uh, and I think this is why the, this result, in my opinion at least, is uh, extra successful. The colors are pretty loyal to the reference, even though, you know, they're not exactly the same, of course, but are more loyal to the reference than usual. And I increased the saturation a bit and it actually makes a lot of sense. Now, I want to talk a bit about color matching in just a second, but uh, let's first go back a bit to wet and wet. So what sparked this was this painting that I showed you on Saturday's video, the 9-11. Uh, and I was very unhappy with how I handled the background and not doing it wet and wet. So I did a few more attempts and actually there are a lot more that I kind of threw uh, away. But I did, for example, this attempt. I'll show you. I also have uh, an apple that I did afterwards. This was from yesterday, actually. But I did th these two attempts and I really put a lot of emphasis on starting light then going gradually darker and, and, and covering everything like pre-wetting but maybe with a bit of a tint and then darkening and darkening and as it dries to make really the most out of wet and wet. I like what I did here which was uh, wet on dry uh, and I did this and I did a bunch of other kind of just smooth washes as, as smooth as I could uh, and I found it was a great practice and I'm starting to get it a bit more. Same for this apple that I just made up. So I didn't use reference, which is why it looks a bit awkward. But my point was just to get a rounded shape and try and build up its uh, solidness using shadow and continuing to charge darker and darker and darker. Uh, so that was the main thing I really wanted to work on. And I feel like especially here in the ripples, you can tell there is uh, quite a bit of an improvement. Uh, and, and I got it as dark as it needed to be on like this one that, that probably isn't as dark as, and here as well It's as dark, but it really frustrated me this original attempt really frustrated me and it felt like there's something in wet and wet that I'm still not getting so long into the, the, the watercolor journey uh, and I feel like doing these quick studies helps uh, and I'm trying to rely more on pre-wetting and then charging and, and practicing that technique. So that's something really good that came out of it. Now, if we go back to color matching, one of the biggest insights I had was when I'm trying to color match off a computer screen, there is one problem. And that is that the computer screen has a brightness. And sometimes it's so bright that the lighter sections are lighter than my paper. So I'll take the squiggle, put it on my uh, MacBook um, uh, monitor, and it'll actually, the white for the sky will be lighter. So I was like, no way, it's impossible. So I decided to print the photo and always, now whenever I wanna practice color matching, I'll work from printed. And also painting, I'll try working from printed. Now it's funny, our uh, printer is low on the blue toner. So we got, it got this nice little red effect and I actually made the most of it and tried to really preserve it in the scene I painted. Um, so that was a huge insight. If you're trying to color match off a computer screen, it may just be too light. And so the problem, I was trying to mix this blue color and I couldn't, no matter how much I tried. And the problem was, it was actually too light. So I printed it and now it's by definition darker than the paper. It's printed on the paper. And I always try and do that. Uh, and here are some attempts just so that you see what I've gone through. It's not just this scene, it's also picture, pictures I opened on my computer, just trying to match and match and get closer to it and get closer and get closer and isolating a color and getting closer and getting closer. So I worked specifically on color matching, both for this painting and also just to practice color matching as a skill in and of itself. And that was actually a 
huge insight to me. The fact that, you know, looking at a computer screen really skews everything, which was obvious, I should have guessed, but you know. And I also tried lowering the, the brightness of the screen and then matching the color and it was much, much easier. So just something to have in mind, a pretty big insight, I have to say, uh, for me. So very happy about that. And it produced this painting, which is, uh, I think, one of my best successes, which is funny. Usually the paintings of myself that I like the most aren't necessarily the most uh, liked by other people, but uh, that's, that's art for you. That's just how it works. Uh, so yeah, very happy about this one. And then lastly, I kind of planned aired my uh, water bucket, which was quite fun. The Mijello bucket, uh, as you know it. Uh, you see it in, in actually a lot of the videos. I probably will share a picture of the two together so you can better see it. But it was super fun to just... Uh, there is no pencil lines here too. I just started laying down the shapes with a brush directly, which is why the drawing is inaccurate, but the, the trade-off is the charm and the kind of magic and how it looks. Uh, so I'll definitely try doing more of these. These are fun just to place something in front of me and try and paint it, or even try to paint the not so obvious things that are around me in the room just from real life rather than a computer screen. Uh, so just to conclude real fast, worked a lot on wet and wet technique, a lot, and then worked a lot on color matching. Make your practice sessions specific. That's, I think, one of the best ways to improve. Uh, and hopefully I can continue showing you this kind of improvement in producing paintings that will also be better lessons and more interesting and more, uh, more uh, better for teaching. Now, I know I have a lot to work on and, and uh, I will talk a bit about that in the intro. So anyway, let's wrap it up face to face. So I really hope seeing these examples, seeing the good uh, results, as well as the kind of ugly practice on, on, on leftover paper helps you. Uh, just know that no matter what level you're at, there is a lot of work involved in getting to the next level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, if you're advanced. Take your time, but the most important thing for me, and I always say it, use the small actions that you can take on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, rather than focusing on expectations and, and always feeling like you're not doing enough or you're not, just make a decision in advance. These are the things I'm going to work on for the next X amount of time and spend that time in every single day or as much as you can and just spend that time doing and, and lower the criteria. The criteria should be doing, it shouldn't be um, achieving a certain result. And that's really what I try doing here. So when I work on a particular skill like color matching or something like that, my only criteria is did I try and match the color as best as I could? Uh, and that's everything that matters. And, and you can always then pile on the scrap papers that you've been using or the different sessions you did and, and try and look after a week or two if you see some kind of improvement, right? Uh, so I hope that helps. I hope the tips I provided you help. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to please, please subscribe if you still aren't. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you again real soon.